And then we get into Edom. Edom, you guys, if you ever see, and you'll see the word Edom a lot in the Old Testament. Um, the word Edom it refers to the, the descendants of Esau. You guys remember Esau, the, you know, the hairy hunter guy that was the um, twin brother of Jacob? And he, you know, kind of went his own direction, kind of the direction of the flesh, kind of did whatever he felt like. And their capital cities were Timon and Basra. And this is in verses 11 and 12. Timon was located southeast of Petra, which is um, well, kind of a really holy, awesome place. And Basra was in north-central Edom. Even though the Edomites and Israelites were closely related, um, you could go all the way back to Genesis 25 for that, Israel had suffered previously at the hands um, of Edom, and, and they suffered grievously. Um, these people were fighting. It's kind of like, I mean, we look at Israel and Islam because they're the descendants of Ishmael, you know, the, these Arabic people that are, you know, all caught up in, in, uh, in the Islamic religion, and they, they are just, at their core, hateful of Jews. I mean, even like moderate Muslims, like don't have a lot of good things to say about Jewish people. And then you just, it's like, where does that come from, man? It's like age old family feuds, brother. You know, that's where it comes from. It's just these people are constantly fighting. Um, so Edom was going to have its strongholds burned. It's like, you see the pattern here? You know, come against God's people, come against God's land, you get burned. Plain and simple. So that's why, again, we teach that, you know, we need to be friendly. With Israel, we need to pray for the peace of Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that God brings things back together there for them and that they recognize their Messiah. And they eventually are going to recognize their Messiah. So, next we have um, Ammon, or Ammon. Um, but Ammon was, uh, had a capital city known as Rabbah. And it was, uh, this covers verses 13 through 15. Uh, they, were the, they were the descendants of Lot's youngest daughter, um, who had committed, they had committed cruel crimes, including, and this is why God destroys people, ripping open pregnant Israelite women with their swords during their expansion wars in Gilead, which is absolutely horrible. So if this happens, I, I think God has the right to just slaughter them. Um, it's just horrible. It's absolutely horrible. God would thus destroy their cities and enslave their people. Now, Ammon and Moab. Ammon and Moab were the incestual um, people groups of Lot's daughters who had got their dad drunk, thought they were the last people on earth, and had sex with them. They had the people, the youngest daughter had the people of Ammon, the oldest daughter had the people of Moab. Now, Moab, uh, among other crimes, uh, had desecrated the tombs of the kings of Edom with no respect for the dead. Moab would be defeated in battle and its palaces burned. So we just went through six nations all the way up to um, uh, chapter 2. And, and you get into like chapter 2, verse 3, it talks about Moab. And he, he's going to send fire upon them with the shouting and the sound of trumpet. You, you see it again. And I will cut off the judge from its midst and slay all its princes. Princes. <laughs> Princesses. Uh, and, and that's what the Lord is just, that's what he thinks, you know, of these people. And so it's like when, when you see some people kind of try to use God as this vindictive, horrible entity that just was kind of rash and just did these crazy things, flew off the handle and killed people. No, no, he, he did this because of years of abuse to morality. I mean, moral abuse, you guys. And any atheist will tell you, well, there are moral laws, right? I mean, have you heard that? You've probably heard that, you know, like when you talk to an atheist, and they're like, well, there are, because you, you, you say, well, where's your, where's your justice, and where is there any foundation for any truth, then, if you don't believe in this? You get to people start talking about, well, there is no truth, it's all, you know, existential or, or relative, and you all, we all make up our own truth, right? It's relative, and, 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 idea. and yeah, it's a good idea or whatever for you. That's good for you. And it's like, no, no, no. Truth doesn't get to be good for you or right for you. Truth is truth all the time, absolute for everybody. That's the definition of truth. And so you'll see people that are like, well, there's this moral fabric, right? There's this moral idea that you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't, 
you know, the taboos. You shouldn't eat people. You shouldn't, you know, have incest or rape. And, I mean, we get into muddy water when people start talking about other sexual sins. But those are pretty bad. <laughs> you know, like, these disgusting things that some of these pagan groups were doing and still goes on in the world in certain places. They're moral issues. And all these people were caught up in these issues. I mean, they were selling kids for possessions and they were selling Israelites into slavery and they were you know they committed incest as a people and and I mean God just isn't okay with that that you know it's peeing in the gene pool and and, and as, as far as he's concerned and and I think that people what I mean we know that the Bible says even in the times of Noah you know it's so awful and God's just like you know I can't I'm not going to contend and strive with man forever my grace reaches a limit where my justice must take over and I believe that he's still gracious in his judgment and justice. You guys understand that? That God can be just. Because he's saying, in my love, I can't put up with this anymore. I can't let this go on anymore. They're going to infect and abuse and hurt more and more people. Kill more babies. And, and, and just all these awful things that these people groups were doing. He's not going to let it go. And as you're going to see, guys, and a lot of people miss this. A lot of people that attack the Old Testament God the God of the Old Testament, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they attack that God and they don't see that he was hard on his own people for the same reasons. But we see his mercy and his grace time and time again and he constantly redeems them back to himself and brings them back. And like I said earlier, I think I mentioned this, that Amos is going to intercede and he's going to relent of another locust blade, relent of burning them with fire, just like all these other people. So, so we now have... Judah and Israel. You know, we're going to pick up in verse 4 of chapter 2. And let's, let's just read, let's read some of this. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will now not turn away its punishment. So he's like, all right, guys, my beloved people, I cannot turn away your punishment either. You know, there's this moral, um, godly law that says, if it goes far enough, I have to deal. Because they have despised, listen to this, listen to what he's saying. They have despised the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments. Their lies lead them astray, lies which their fathers followed. And this is bad, guys. Their law was their, their way to follow God. That, that was their beautiful religion and beautiful way to connect and worship their God was to come and offer sacrifices in the right way and to be clean, be pronounced clean and to walk clean among all the people of the, of the world. And they're, they're forsaking it, despising it, he says, and they haven't kept my commandments. Verse five, but I will send a fire upon Judah, uh oh, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions and for four, I will not, not turn away its punishment. Because they sell the righteous for silver. Guys, listen to this. Israel's doing this. Judah. Judah is doing this. The southern kingdom, the godlier of the kingdoms is doing this. And they, and they sell the poor for a pair of sandals. Guys, this is like child slavery. I mean, well, or, or let's just say poor people slavery. Um... That I I mean I, I don't even know how to think about that like that's really bizarre and horrible. They're they're dehumanizing people. That's this is not okay. They're, the lives of people have become less important to them. And, and the law, you guys, back in Deuteronomy and different places inside of the Torah, the first five books, you see all over the place. Like you need to make, you need to take care of the poor. You need to leave gleanings on the side of your field to feed the poor. You need to love the poor. You need to forgive debts of the poor. All these things that God, you know, loves the poor, and, and they, were, they were trouncing the poor. 